Hello there, and welcome to my statistics video involving the measures of dispersion. I'll be the Tall Guy Tutor, also known as Alex, and we are going to get started on this journey today through ungrouped measures of dispersion. Now, ungrouped and grouped measures of dispersion hold two significantly different equations, and we're going to show you how to go through the first one of these two today. If you're looking for grouped but you don't know how to do it, this is the first place to stop. And later on, if we have requests by a few people, we'll start putting up a video on how to do this in a TI-84 or 83 calculator and how to do this on Excel for those of you who can't use calculators but want to still do it on a computer anyways. So dispersion, a measure usually involving some form of variability. Once again, if you're using definitions, you're going to be talking about one definition leading into another definition leading into another definition. A measure of dispersion, usually in case of um, statistics courses, usually involves some form of sigma, or usually involves an S, or usually involves something called an IQR, which this is a spoiler for another movie later to come. But variance in general, and this is the item that most students are calculating, variance involves the idea of the average squared deviations. And the formula for that involves what you're seeing currently in front of you. The sum of each data point minus the average squared over the total amount of numbers. Now this is your general population variance. The other one appearing directly in your bottom right hand corner is the sample variance equation. Now we're gonna let this spool through just for a moment, but there's a significant but to this. We are calculating variance in this video. If you want standard deviation, you're going to have to look for the square root of each of these values. So to those of you who are complaining, saying, I didn't want this for standard deviation. I wanted this for variance or scratch that vice versa. You wanted standard deviation, but you don't care about the variance. Got news for you. You can't have one without the other. And unfortunately, out of the two, this one comes first. But for the most part, if you read off both of these equations directly, this E symbol, which we're going to continuously use throughout the video, is called the sum symbol. And for those of you who are still struggling with your basic statistics, this symbol right here refers to your average. And this other symbol over here is also an average. Keep in mind, though, that the main symbols for average equations are exactly the same. The symbol over here for this little delta symbol, which I'm going to try drawing out again, is for populations, and this other one is dealing with samples. Do these two symbols matter? Yes, because later on in other videos, you have to be able to distinguish the difference between the two of them because they'll be gateways to other parametric distributions. If you don't know what I just said, don't worry about it. Moving on. So in this first part, we're going to talk about calculating population variance. So I'm just going to rewrite this little equation that we started with earlier, which is the data points minus the mean squared over the amount of numbers that you have. So we're going to move on downward and we're going to make this nice little table here where we're going to list out our data points. And uh, excuse me, coming off a nasty little cold here. We're actually going to draw a table. It's going to look something very similar to what you guys would see in Excel or on your calculators. And the second column of this table is going to be the deviation, the data point minus the mean. And this third column is going to be exactly what you see in the numerator, but without the sum symbol. Let's put out some easy numbers here. One, two, three, four, and five. So our table is set. Now we want to figure out what is our average. Well, in statistics terminology, it's the sum of all the data points divided by the amount of numbers that you have. You've done this since elementary school. You add up all the numbers, which in this case is very good, 15. And the amount of numbers you have, perfect. Average, beautiful. So as you progress through here, we're going to start making this look more like an Excel sheet, but we're going to work from row to row, we're not, and we're going to work straight across. So 1 minus 3, 2 minus 3, 3 minus 3, 4 minus 3, and 5 minus 3. 
Now you work through each of these levels of subtraction accordingly, and the centermost column can have positives and negatives. If you see negatives in here, don't worry about it. If you see positives in here, don't worry about it. Now you're going to square each of the numbers that you just got for yourself. So the negative 2 squared is 4, negative 1 squared is 1, and etc., etc. Um, you don't know how many times I've seen students uh, put negatives in this third column. Any number squared is going to be positive. Fact. So we add up all these numbers in the third column, and we should get, in this case, 4, 1, 1, 4 should equal, oh, 10. So wait a minute. That fits in the top slot over there, and we get... 10 over 5. Now, just a couple of quick notations here. We don't care about the sum of this column as much unless you're doing correlations, but we're, but that's for another video going on um, later on. If you're using the Pearson book at Cypress College, we often refer to it as chapter 4. But again, we'll, we'll stick to that another day. Or if you guys are doing z-scores, you know who you are. Um, spoiler alert, another video for another day. <clears throat> but this 10 right here is the same as this 10 way up here. So when you're doing your homework, the simple set of steps are 1, set up your equation, 2, set up your data, 3, find your sum of your data, 4, average, 5, deviations, 6, deviation squared, 7, the sum of the deviation squareds, and 8, variance. Then you can find your standard deviation, but you got to do all this extra junk first. Otherwise, you can't really get to it. For those of you out there who said, my teacher never showed me this, yes, they did. Every teacher shows this once. They just don't show it in this format as much. Our goal is to make this look like something that you would use in technology. But for samples, you know, samples hold the same regard. You know, you want to find the sum of each of the data points minus the mean. And don't worry about symbology. It just, you worry about that a little more later on. But the data points minus the mean divided by the degrees of freedom. Now, degrees of freedom in this case is always n minus 1. Um, don't worry about it. Just know that it's a formula. Um, but the sample mean, same as the last one. You take each of your data points, and we're going to find our deviations. So setting up our chart just like the last one. <clears throat> Perfect. Now we're all set to make our final Excel-looking chart. Notice this time I'm going just a little bit faster because I'm running out of time in this video. And we're going to use the same numbers, <clears throat> which means that we should have the same sum of all our numbers. And we plug them into our mean formula. Ta-da! Now, we already know the calculations for each of these. And the point of showing this both ways is that, yes, you are coming up with the same exact numbers. That's not changing. And the sum of all these numbers? Of course, we want to make sure that we write it out to perfect extent. Plug it back into our other formula, right where it's supposed to go. But this time around, we only care about 4 because we had 5 data values, and 5 minus 1 is 4. So just for reminder, sample size in this case, the amount of numbers that we have, which was 5 minus 1. So we still have our same, five, so we still have our same set of steps. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 six, seven, and eight. And all these steps are exceptionally important. Now, if you want to do all your other stuff by hand, um, that's great, fine and dandy. Most teachers expect you to do it once. Um, we're gonna go into another video later on that shows you how to do this on the calculators. Um, I don't necessarily like using calculator functions, but in most cases I have no choice, and you won't either but you still have to know some of these properties. So let's go over some of the properties of a standard deviation. 
So this is valid if and only if your data is symmetric and has a measure of central tendency involving the mean values. And finally, I know I'm running a little bit over, but in short, this is something that you learn about later on in the course. And this one is actually the most important. Your center column, so the second column, must contain both positives and negatives. Otherwise, your mean is either too high or too low. So you'll either see all negatives or all positives. If you see that while you're doing your work, you've done something wrong. And finally, can variance ever be negative? Uh -uh. For those of you who don't remember your algebra, this is a common practice. If you square a number, it should always come out positive. People plug them into their calculators as negative 2 squared without any parentheses. They come out with a negative. Not how it works. Anyways, sorry for the sarcasm. My name is the Tall Guy, or you can call me Alex, and I will see you next time.